We are designed to learn. That's how we grow, right? But when we learn, something interesting happens. The nerves in our brain are called neurons, and they're a completely different shape. They're long and skinny, okay? You have an axon on one end, you have a dendrite on the other, information flows one way. Not a big deal. Now, what happens is as we learn, we repeat behavior. And it's pretty true that you don't get new brain cells. You have a limited number of brain cells. There's about a trillion. They're finding that some of them grow back, but the numbers are small. But they're critical because it's about regenerating spinal cords and stuff. But in general, we have a trillion brain cells. You create approximately three and a half million neurosynaptic junctions. So we have a synapse, and that's the gap between the two nerves. Okay. They don't line up. So if this is a neuron and this is a neuron and they line up, they never quite touch. The gap is a, is a synapse. So we have a neurosynaptic pathway. We make about three and a half million neurosynaptic pathways an hour, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You are constantly, constantly, constantly getting better at something. You're focused here. Where's your attention on me? Guess what? You're building all these neurons. If this is making sense and you go, ah, I'm getting some, you're building neurons, okay? If you have a bad day at work and you go home and you take it out on your dog, guess what you're getting better at? If you go, God, I'm so depressed. I hate being depressed. I'm depressed. What are you getting better at in that moment? I am successful. I am awesome. I rock. What am I getting better at here? Marty, master assessments. What are they? They are a collection of neurons in your brain that have been rehearsed so long and so powerfully that we don't say that's a collection. We say this is reality. Does that make sense? I'm going to give you one quick example. So I'm going to show you a miracle. Got it. All right. I'm standing up. If I lean to the side, I catch myself. We don't have a robot on the planet that can do that. They got the little Asimos. They're thrilled when they can dance in a circle and go, eby, 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 and they move upstairs. But they can't balance. Okay? If I lean to the side, I catch myself. And you're laughing, going, yeah, OK, so? <laughs> the thicker the bundle, the less we call it learning, and the more we call it reality. We practice things so often that at some point, they're no longer considered to be a learning. They're considered to be just the way things are. OK? You look at me and you laugh. You go, Chris, you're standing on two feet. It's not a big deal. That's right. However, if I practice, at that point, people go, wait a minute. That was interesting. I can't stay there because I don't have a big bundle of nerves. But I practiced it enough to where I have a moderate bundle and I can stand on my hands for a short period of time. Whatever we practice, we get better at. Everybody got that? OK. I practice things so often that at some point, it's no longer a collection of neurons. It becomes normalcy. So what are some names we can give this bundle of nerves? Let me give you an example. Psychology calls it a predisposition to action. Okay, cognitive behavioral therapy puts rats in mazes, and they're literally watching how fast they can build neurons to do things under different conditions. Pre, they're predisposed to do something. In, well, let's just say, what would we call it in coaching? What's a great name for this in coaching? It's a habit. A thick bundle is simply a habit. It's a good habit or a bad habit. It doesn't matter. It's a habit. Whatever you practice, you get better at. Very simple. Okay. 